So in this question, we're told that a machine cuts strips of metal to length L, which is measured in centimetres, where L is normally distributed with standard deviation of 0.5 centimetres. We're told that strips with length either less than 49 centimetres or greater than 50.75 centimetres cannot be used. And we're told that 2.5% of the cut lengths exceed 50.98 centimetres. And what we're asked to do, we're asked to find the probability that a randomly chosen strip of metal can be used. So summarising the information we have, we're told that we have a random variable and we're going to denote it by L. And we know that it has standard deviation of 0.5, so therefore writing it in normal distribution form here, we have the mean mu, which is something we may potentially need to work out, and then we have that the variance is going to be the standard deviation squared. So then what else are we told? So we are told that the probability that the length is greater than 50.98 centimetres, and we're told this when we're told that given 2.5% of the cut lengths exceed 50.98. So therefore we write 2.5% in decimal form, which is going to be 0 0.025. So what we need to do, I'll just write it down here. So our first step is going to be to find the mean, and we denote it by mu. And then our second step is going to be then to find the probability and what probability do we want to find? Well, we want to find the probability that the length is between 49 and 50.7. So putting this in brackets here, just to note it down for later, we want to find the probability that the length is between 49 and 50.75. So first of all, the first step we need to find the mean mu, and how are we going to do this? So we're going to use z-scores. So we know that our z-score is going to be equal to x, take away the mean mu, and we divide that by the standard deviation. So what is our z-score? So we know that for 2.5%, we want to find everything that is to the left of our point, of our point 2.5. So we know that this can be found on the distribution table by doing 1 minus 0.025 and that is equal to 0 0.9750 so then we look up this value 0 0.9750 we look up that on our on table or do it on the calculator and this means that our z-score looking up on the table is going to be 1.96 so therefore we can say that 1.96 is going to be equal to 50.98 and we take away mu and then we divide this by our standard deviation which is 0 0.5 so for rearranging this we're going to have that 50.98 minus mu is going to be equal to 1.96 times 0 0.5 and then rearranging this one step further we're going to have that mu is going to be equal to 50.98 minus our other side which is 1.96 multiplied by 0 0.5. We can then put these values into our calculator and we have that mu is 49.97 and we round that to 50. So therefore we have that mu is equal to 50 centimeters. So then what we can now do, we have our distribution here, we can now rewrite it with our now known value of mu. So therefore we have that L is going to be normally distributed with mu equals 50 and standard deviation of 0 0.5, so our variance is 0 0.5 squared. So then now we want to find our probability. So we're going to have that the probability that L is between 49 and 50.75 and we can use our knowledge of manipulating probabilities to say that this is going to be equal to the probability of L less than 50.75 and we take away the probability of L less than 49. So we now think how do we work these out? So we could put these into our calculator with the information we know or we could also do it manually and I'm just going to run through it manually. 
So we have that the probability of L less than 50.75 is going to be equal to the probability, so we're going to use Z scores again, of Z being less than 50.75, then we take away 50, and we divide by our standard deviation of 0 0.5, and then we put this into our calculator, and this comes out as the probability of Z being less than 1.5, which is equal to the cumulative distribution function phi of 1.5. And we then look up this on a probability normal distribution table, and this comes out as 0 0.9332. And then we can do the same thing for the probability of L less than 49. And this is going to be equal to the probability of Z being less than 49 minus 50 over 0 0.5. So this time we have a negative. So we have that the probability of Z is going to be less than negative 2. So then this time... Since we have the negative, we're then going to do 1 subtracted the cumulative distribution function of 2. So therefore, this is going to be equal to 1 minus phi of 2, which is going to be equal to 0 0.0228. So therefore, we can take this number here and this number here and substitute them in here and here. So therefore, we'll have that the probability of L being between 49 and 50.75 is going to be equal to 0 0.9332 minus 0 0.0228. And putting this into a calculator and rounding to three significant figures, this comes out as 0 0.910. So in this question, there was five marks available, and we receive our first mark for knowing to use the information that we were given and putting together the fact that the probability of L being greater than 50.98 was going to be equal to our 2.5% probability. We then receive our second mark for successfully working out what our Z-score was, so that was 1.96. And then we receive our third mark for finding that the mean mu was equal to 50. We then receive our fourth mark for then knowing to find the probability that L was between 49 and 50. And then we receive our final mark for working out the correct answer and concluding with 0 0.910. So in this part of the question, we're told that 10 strips of metal are selected at random. And we're asked to find the probability that fewer than four of these strips cannot be used. So in this case, we know that the probability that a strip cannot be used will be equal to one take away 0 0.910, where 0 0.910 was our answer to part A. So now, if we let x be a random variable, which denotes the number of strips that cannot be used, then we're going to have that x is binomially distributed with n equal to 10, and the probability p is going to be equal to 0 0.09. And where does 0 0.09 come from? We have 0 0.09 is going to be 1 minus 0 0.910, which is 0 0.09. So this comes from this part up here. So therefore, writing that in a more mathematical sense, we have the x as a random variable, and it is going to be binomially distributed with n equals 10 and p equals 0 0.09. So then what do we want to find? So we want to find the probability that fewer than four strips cannot be used. So therefore, 
that is equivalent to saying we want to find the probability of a random variable x where x is less than or equal to 3 and we can either do this in our calculator or read it from a table and this comes out as 0 0.99. In this question there was two marks on offer and we receive our first mark for correctly noticing and writing out the distribution. So in our case we have a binomial distribution and then we receive our second mark for using either our calculator or the binomial tables to come to the correct answer of 0 0.99. So in part C of this question, we're told that a second machine cuts strips of metal of length x centimetres, where x is normally distributed with standard deviation of 0 0.6 centimetres. And we're told that a random sample of 15 strips cut by the second machine was found to have a mean length of 50.4 centimetres. And we're asked to state your hypotheses clearly and use a 1% level of significance to test whether or not the mean length of all the strips cut by our new second machine is greater than 50.1 centimetres. So we're first going to note down the information we're given. So we're given that n is 15 because we're dealing with 15 strips. We're given that sigma, which is our standard deviation, is equal to 0 0.6 centimetres. And we're given that our sample mean, which we'll denote by x bar, is equal to 50.4 centimetres. So we're first going to state our hypotheses. So this means we'll have a null hypothesis and we will have a alternative hypothesis, which will be denoted by h1. So as we do with these types of questions, we'll have that h0 is going to be our mean mu is equal to 50.1 centimetres and then our alternative hypothesis so in the question we're asked to test whether or not the mean length of all the strips is greater than 50.1 centimetres so therefore this is going to be a one-sided test where we test to see if mu is greater than 50.1 centimetres just right in here it's a one-sided test so before we write out how a random variable is distributed, we need to take into account the standard error of the mean. So this time, instead of using standard deviation in our distribution, we need to use standard error of the mean. This is since we're dealing with a distribution of sample means. So therefore, this is going to be equal to sigma over the square root of n. So therefore, in our case, it's going to be equal to 0 0.6 over the square root of 15. So then we can then say if we have a random variable, in this case it's going to be x bar, let that be distributed normally and we know that the mean mu is going to be 50.1 and this time around our standard deviation is this. So this means that if we square this we'll have our variance. So we'll have 0 0.6 squared and then root 15 squared is going to be just 15. So therefore, we can now move on to try and work out the probability. So we'll have that the probability that our random variable x bar is greater than 50.4. So we're going to use our kind of z score technique again. So we'll have the probability of z being greater than 50.4 minus mu which is 50.1 and we divide all of this by our standard error of the mean which is going to be 0 0.6 divided by the square root of 15 and then putting this into a calculator we'll have that the probability of z is going to be greater than 1.94 so then this means that we can find the probability by doing 1 minus the cumulative distribution function of 1.94. We can either do this on our calculators or by referring to a normal distribution table and this comes out as 0 0.026. So then what is this value? This is effectively going to be our p-value. So then we have that our p-value 0 0.026 is greater than 0 0.01, which 
where 0 0.01 is alpha. So then this means, since we've now done our test, we've compared our p-value to the value of alpha, so which is 0 0.01, we therefore conclude, since the p-value is greater than alpha, that we do not reject H0, and we can conclude that there is insufficient evidence that the mean length of strips is greater than 50.1 centimeters. So therefore we've completed this question. We receive our first mark for stating our hypothesis here. We then receive our second mark for successfully writing out how a random variable x bar is distributed. We then receive our third mark for correctly working out the p-value, which in our case was 0 0.026. And we then receive our fourth mark for saying that our p-value is greater than alpha. Then we receive our fifth and final mark for giving a correct concluding statement.